In the late 1700s, decorated American war hero Benedict Arnold took a stand by defecting to the British cause during the Revolutionary War due to disagreements with Washington. The ironic outcome was that Arnold's destructive stand encouraged Americans to fight more aggressively against the British, thus ensuring a victory that he betrayed his country to prevent. Benedict Arnold had a struggling childhood. He was born in Norwich, Connecticut, and grew up in Rhode Island, which his great-great-grandfather helped found. His great-grandfather was a recurring town governor for 10 terms. He lived in a wealthy family until his father made bad decisions causing financial problems. Being arrested for drunkenness several times, his dad grew into a life of bad habits. This caused Arnold to drop out of the school he attended in Canterbury. While he was there, some siblings of his died from yellow fever. His mom and dad died later on, and his other siblings died in different ways, which left the only members of his family to be his sister and himself. This turn of events caused him to be ambitious, but a troublemaker and an emotionally damaged person. He took up an apothecary shop apprenticeship under his cousins, but left it a couple times for the army during the French and Indian War. He finished the apprenticeship and became his own master, opening his own shop, where he earned the trust of the locals. Owning his own business, Arnold gained leadership skills and the ability to influence others. He was hesitant to spend his money, but later lost that skill. He married Margaret Mansfield in 1767 and had three sons with her. After being appointed captain of officers in the Continental Army in 1775, Arnold found that the British were planning to attack. So he wrote to General Gates, who wrote back saying, there's a lack of supplies. He then realized that nobody had a hope that they would win the war. He was convinced that he was getting set up to take the blame for the fall of the country. He came back from the battle at Fort Ticonderoga already mad that he had had to share his power with Ethan Allen, and found out that his wife, Margaret Mansfield, had died the same month. After this happened, he married Peggy Shipton, who was 20 years younger than him. She brought him fame, but at the cost of his financial status. Arnold had earned a reputation of bravery with the Americans. This brought about his promotion to Major General of the Continental Army. At this point, he was ready to bring in his troops to a fall, and he even wrote his will. Because Peggy was the daughter of a loyalist sympathizer, she was helping British General John Andre with some strategies of how to defeat the Continental Army by contacting his soldiers. This was a turning point in Arnold's internal struggle. It made a conflict of interest for Arnold, and he thought he could help the British only a little bit, and it wouldn't hurt anyone. The problem was that he kept that mindset and continually thought helping more wouldn't hurt anyone. Washington didn't exclusively distrust Arnold, and he even told Major General Spencer to treat Arnold as an equal for the greater good of the people. Arnold wasn't completely careless about the lives of his soldiers in the way he directed as a military leader, but he did take risks he had thought through. He provided money and care for Dr. Warren's children, which showed that he wasn't always selfish. He funded his troops, but made sure not to forget about his family needs. At the same time, Washington started to almost replace Arnold, causing his jealousy to turn his friendship with Gates to enmity. Washington had started to provoke Arnold and go out of his way to remind him of his lack of influence on the final decision in crucial matters. You are by no means to consider yourself as upon a separate and independent command, said Washington. He said that anybody who claimed Arnold had acceptable behavior would be a liar and a villain. Arnold gained command of West Point, which gave him access to more sensitive information. He gradually weakened the fort's defenses and took from its arsenal refusing to order repairs for it. In addition, he started transferring his things to England. He continued to leak battle strategies and positions. He had good reasons to personally take a stand and show his opinion, but executed it in a poor manner. The treason Arnold committed had not demanded that he would take allegiance with either side. He approached the British, wondering how much his allegiance would pay him, because his financial state was poor. He did not care about making the outcome good for the British Empire and had no intention to exhaust himself for the side that would lose. He knew that he could tell Britain how to win the war. He knew that the only way he would be accepted was if they thought he was indispensable. Captain Andre granted Arnold's wish and let him join the army on May 20th. When Washington found out of Arnold's betrayal, he felt humiliation and thus aimed to make a public example of him, as Washington himself said. 
The information he leaked caused him to eventually lose respect from the people. Arnold's code name was Monk after George Monk, who was a betrayer of Oliver Cromwell. Arnold believed that the war would undo the damage his father had done to the family name, but his actions proved otherwise. Washington wanted to make a publicly known example of Arnold, and wanted to go to extreme measures to make him not forgotten. Arnold gave more of a reason for the Americans to fight with passion due to his hatred for him. He had an influential impact on an officer named Jean Champ, who helped him narrowly escape an attempted kidnap by Washington, and then proceeded to take leadership under Arnold in the British Army. Arnold wrote a letter saying how he was already disagreeing with the British orders only a little while after he was given a position. He wanted to push against Washington, hoping that he could win the war for the British, but the British officers had already given up on trusting him. The war was not worth fighting anymore. All it would do would cause more humiliation to the British. They had already lost a war to one of their colonies. The British gave up and found Arnold at fault for losing the war and causing the death of British General John Andre due to his foolish decisions. He wanted to work for the British East India Company, but they rejected him, remembering his name. His poor decisions governed the rest of his life. Even people who were friends of Arnold did not desire to have any relation between them drawn out. He became a figure of ridicule and his betrayal grew to be a common topic. Many effigies were made of him and Nathaniel Green said, Never since the fall of Lucifer has a fall equal to his. Arnold's legacy, for better or for worse, has had an impact on us all. When one thinks of him, they imagine a traitor, and that's mainly because of Washington. He, as one of the United States' first role models, did much sullying to Arnold's name, which painted the picture of Arnold as a malicious man. Benjamin Franklin compared Arnold to Judas, saying, Judas only sold one man, Arnold sold three million. Some people believe that he was the Antichrist foretold in the Bible. He is lacking the credit that is due as he is not quite as well remembered as playing a very important role around the crucial parts of the war when it mattered most, before he betrayed. Had it not been for his betrayal, the American people would not have been as inspired to fight and destroy the British. It has been said that had he died at Saratoga, he would go down as the second bravest and best military leader, only next to the unbeatable Washington. At the Saratoga Battle Memorial, there is a sculpture of just a boot next to the trail, representing Arnold when he got shot in the leg there. The plaque reads, quote, In memory of the most brilliant soldier of the Continental Army, who was desperately wounded on the spot, winning for his countrymen the decisive battle of the American Revolution, and for himself the rank of Major General, unquote. Yet, the monument nowhere mentions Arnold's name. This shows how his name was associated with evil not only in his time, but throughout the rest of the course of history. In Britain, his name is still tied in with the death of many and the loss of the colony that grew into the United States of America. He is also possibly remembered more because he was the first major traitor against the United States. Benedict Arnold had a rough childhood and an even harder military career, but he buried the hatchet of his childhood and rose up in power. He acted foolishly due to anger from his disagreements with Washington, his jealousy, and his lack of being trusted. He hurt himself and others more than he planned to. He should have addressed his issues in a more straightforward manner and worried about how the outcome would affect others, not just himself. This had been known as one of the greatest falls ever, especially for an American. He was acquitted to be like a fallen angel. Both sides he was on were being brought down due to his decisions.